welcome back to week nine of science. We have been having so much fun. I loved doing Harry Potter week with you guys last week. That was amazing. This week we're going down into a littler world, into the world of insects and bugs, which is going to be a lot of fun. And part of that is the tadpoles that we started growing, which I hope you had a lot of fun watching in our pre-show. Tiny Dancer is getting some amazing legs. And you might notice some of our tadpoles are sort of bopping at the surface, which is a really good sign because frogs don't have gills, but tadpoles can breathe in the water, but frogs can't. So you guys can think about, hmm, why would that be a good sign if they're up there trying to gulp something? Um, today we are going to be making bug hotels, and you'll have two options of bug hotels you want to make, which I'll explain later. And tomorrow we will be making a book into a beehive. This is a book from a local author. I'm super excited about her. Lynn Brunell makes all these awesome science books. And she has a book called Turn This Book Into a Beehive, which we're gonna do tomorrow. But if you don't have this book, that's fine. You'll just need like a recycled book for tomorrow. And we're gonna turn it into a beehive so that we can help our pollinators. So our pollinators are tomorrow. And today is actually insects that do other things that we'll learn about. I always go over supplies first in case you didn't get our little messages about what's going on and what our plan is. So we'll talk about that and then we'll get to our shout out. So if you want a shout out, make sure you type it into the comment box and Evan will get it for you. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and we are still working on sort of migrating from YouTube to Zoom. And in fact, if we have video in Zoom and sound and comments, we might actually do Zoom for parents who want their kids more isolated and then just regular YouTube with YouTube comments that way so we're not managing quite as much stuff. Um, today's projects of making a bug hotel, you could either make a natural habitat and track what types of bugs or how many bugs go into those natural habitats, or you could design like a actual bug hotel play space. So you'll need different supplies for either. For making the natural habitats, I have some recycled milk cartons, but you could use something else in your recycling bin for that. And then I have sort of just like a bin of various natural products that I got from our compost that bugs might enjoy. I have a few different types so I can make that project and see and test it and watch it over time. But then I also have little people who love engineering and making. And if you love to be more creative with your making, you could make a bug hotel that's more like a bug playground. And we'll have to think about some of the same things in both of them. And if you do this option, you'll still need probably your recycling bin. We've got hot glue going in the hot glue. We've got popsicle sticks, tape would work. So if you're doing that sort of a project, you maybe need more creative things. Whereas if you're doing this one, we may need more natural items. But we'll be thinking about the same sorts of things for our insects during that time. And we'll learn why. Yeah, fabulous. So let's learn about some things that we want for bugs. Because you might be thinking, Dr. Erica, do I really want a bug hotel like close to me? I don't like bugs. And sometimes when we think about bugs, we think about mosquitoes, which I don't want. I do not want mosquitoes. Granted, mosquitoes are a huge part of the food chain. So while I personally abhor mosquitoes, I hate them, they're actually really important because a lot of fish eat mosquitoes and a lot of birds eat mosquitoes. And those are like little things that bigger things than go eat. So even bugs that we hate, like mosquitoes, play a really important part of the food web. However, we don't want to really attract mosquitoes to our houses because I don't know about you, but I hate mosquito bites. We can leave the mosquitoes for like the ponds and the streams far, far away. Oh, question. We have a question. No, but I did it? miss uh, shouting out Naomi. She was here early. Oh, hi Naomi. And her oh, comment I'm didn't sorry. come through. So. Oh, I'm sorry to get hi, your shout Naomi. out. Hello, Naomi. Um, so some bugs, even the ones we don't like, serve a really important purpose of the food web. And if we take out those little pieces, then we kind of take out the small pieces. And if we take out the small pieces, we take out the middle pieces, and we take out the medium pieces, we take out the large pieces, and we take out the large pieces, we take out us. And last I checked, I really enjoy being here. So I don't want to even take out the little pieces because that has this cascading effect going up. But bugs are not just food for other things. Like they do some other really good, important work. Some of them pollinate. And like I mentioned, tomorrow we're gonna really work on helping our pollinators because they need a lot of help 
and we're going to make a bee hotel. We're going to turn a book, any book, not even just necessarily this one, into a beehive. Um, but there are other insects that pollinate that aren't just bees. So things like butterflies pollinate. Um, some like walking things like beetles can pollinate, which is amazing. And that is really important to our food supply. So pollination is required for us to make apples or almonds or all of those yummy things that we like to eat that are plant-based. We need pollinators. We're going to really work on the pollinators tomorrow, but some of the ones that will help today will do that. Bugs also help aerate the soil. So they dig all these little tunnels that then let water go through all these little places and it helps the roots of plants get water. So that's really important. We want bugs like pill bugs or worms or any bugs that dig to help because they will help keep our plants healthy and help our plants utilize all of the water that's falling from the sky. So that's kind of important. They also produce a lot of things that we like. So honey, I know I really like honey, I think it's delicious, produced by bugs. Silk, produced by bugs. So silk is produced by the silkworm in China and they make it into that really lovely silky fabric. It's funny that we would describe silk as silky. It's not very <laughs> helpful, I guess, but really smooth fabric. Wax, great thing, we love to use wax. Candles are fantastic developed by bugs. Lacquer, which is like what makes like wood on ships really shiny, made by bugs. Dyes, things that we like to dye our clothes with, some of them made by bugs. So even things like museums love bugs because bugs can be the perfect bone cleaners. So if you find a great little fossil or something, you can use a whole bunch of carpet beetles and carpet beetles will eat anything and they will, museums use them to clean the bones that you will then see presented. So bugs are like really important. They do a lot of really, really cool stuff. And today we are gonna think about how we can help those bugs survive and local bugs specifically, but we have a question. So we're going to Evan. Well, I asked the question online, what are your favorite bugs? Ooh, and we got some favorite bugs. Raiden says that you kind of offended him because oh. you, he loves bugs so much and it hurt his feelings. Well, I love but bugs. I don't like mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Though. It was just mosquitoes. Oh right? yeah, I just don't like mosquitoes. I love bugs. Abel says no, his favorite bugs are bees. Into mosquitoes, so. Yeah. Ooh, Abel's is bees. Abel's love is it. Bees. Megan loves worms. Yes. Michael worms loves spiders. See, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so happy because so many people don't like any bugs. They want them all gone. I don't even want mosquitoes gone, guys. And I hate mosquitoes, okay? But Raiden, not all bugs. I like lots of bugs, just not mosquitoes. Because if you ever saw me get a mosquito bite, like, it's not like, oh, I have a little bite. It's like, oh, I got one bite. And then if I get two bites, I'm like, oh, I got two bites. It's terrible. That's why I don't like mosquitoes. It's like Joseph loves bullet ants. Ooh. Don't Are those the ones that they have in the African nations where you put the... As part of a... Yes, it's like... Oh, in the Amazon, and yeah. it's like the test is like going into manhood. Right of passage, to... yeah. Oh, woo. And then Callie That's says, quite a choice too, Callie so. says she doesn't even choose favorites. She loves all bugs, <gasps> except for poisonous bugs and mosquitoes, and the specific wasp that stung her two years ago. Ooh, just the one. <laughs> just that one. I like it. I like it. See, we're all on the same page. We want to help bugs. Yes. So you guys have two options today as we build, and both of them are building options, so we're going to put on our pretend maker hat. Turn into a maker. Doo -doo. I need to get a maker hat. I've talked about this. I, have I want a maker, maker hat. hat. Isabella's maker hat is a roll of tape. <laughs> so one option is if you want to study sort of what bugs like so that you could maybe then say, I want to create this area so I can have a haven for bugs that's maybe out by my garden. You would want to know, do they like dead leaves better? Do they like dead blackberry bushes? Do they like twigs? And we could set up an experiment where we make something like a little bug hotel and we see who has the most occupiers for the bug hotel or how quickly do bug mo bugs move into the bug hotel. And you could track that over time. So this could be a really fun one if you love data and you love checking things out and looking at things and watching things over time. This is going to be the project for you. If you love being super creative and you like to just like build to your heart's content, then I would maybe suggest building a bug hotel that is like a bug playground. And this is more of, I might take a few pill bugs and let them play in here 
but I'm not necessarily trying to help the pill bugs like get a bigger population. But that's totally okay because what this does is it helps people realize how important bugs are. It gets a conversation started and then the more conversations we have, the more likely we are to start creating things in our gardens or our compost bins that really help the bugs that then helps the solution also. So even by doing this and you guys sharing it with your parents or your friends or other adults, you will have the chance to really impact the health of our insect population. So the first thing we always do though in an engineering thing is we plan. So we need to make a plan. This is gonna be my plan. And I know my girls are going to be, I think, making these guys, although I'm not entirely sure. But some things that bugs will really need, whether you make a bug hotel or you make the bug hotel adventure park, they need shade because I'm pretty sure that bugs don't like being out in the hot sun, which is why like when my driveway is really, really hot, I don't see much crawling across it. All right, when I lift up rocks and I look under where it's nice, nice and cool and shady and damp, way more bugs. So they like shade. They also, I need to think about how I'm gonna do water. It is really, I wonder if by the end of this I'm gonna be able to write upside down really well. They need some sort of water source. All right, and that might be a damp cloth that might, you might make a little tiny bowl for the bugs to go in. I mean, even bees will drink from ponds or they'll drink from bird baths. So you could make something a little bit larger and bugs will still come to drink. They don't always just absorb water from their surroundings. So we do need to think about water and shade. And then we also need to think about placement because we don't want to put this maybe like right by a woodpecker because if I make this beautiful thing to look at bugs and try to get bugs to come in and see, oh, do bugs like the twigs or the leaves better? I won't actually know if a woodpecker's like, ooh, there's a tasty buffet. So I need to think about where I place it at and maybe it needs to have some sort of security. So maybe I want some sort of security. Security. Did I spell that right? I don't know if I yes, spelled that right. Um, ooh, and when I'm thinking about water, I also need to think about water in the other direction. So maybe I need like a roof so that I don't drown my bugs because having access to water is really important, but having access to too much water is also detrimental. So maybe a maybe I want a roof in my plan. All right. And then once we have sort of the things that we want to think about, we want to draw our idea. So for the milk cartons, my plan is going to be, I'm going to take a milk carton and I'm actually going to keep this stuff right here. So this is my milk carton like that milk carton. How do you do that? Difficultly. And I think I'm gonna cut a hole in the milk carton like this. So this is gonna get cut out. So notice I'm drawing it and I'm labeling my plan as I go. So that I sort of have a blueprint on what I'm gonna do. This part of the milk carton I'm gonna keep because this is gonna be my roof. So I'm gonna keep this. And I'm gonna let myself know that I want to keep that by just writing the word keep. And then I'm gonna stuff this area and with whatever I want to put on it. So I'm gonna stuff it. And I'm thinking I actually have four milk cartons. I'm thinking I might take three milk cartons and make like a little village. And then I might use the fourth milk carton and I might cut it really low. And this could be my water. And I could have like the three sort of around the water. That's my plan for that idea. But, Maybe I also want to make this cool bug hotel, which I know is what Isabella is working on. And I am going to show you her plan at the moment because she's working on it because she started working on this the other day. But she's got this great plan where she's got a tunnel, which looks so much fun because I don't know about you. I love watching things go through tunnels. And I'm actually thinking, I see that she made her tunnel out of foil, which seems a little hot. So I might suggest maybe a different option. Well, I don't know how to do it. But... 
I'm also thinking I have some clear tubing that could be cool because that would be a fun tunnel. You could watch your little pill bugs go through the tunnel. She's got some soil that she wrote here. She's got a, what is this, a watering? No, undetermined. Undetermined. All right, look, she's not even sure what she's going to do there. That's cool. She's going to put some wood with holes in it. I love that because bugs love wood with holes. Well, I'm doing pill bugs. She's yeah. going to do some shade. She's going to build some roofing to it. So she has this great project that's not necessarily to increase the bug population, but to be a really happy home to a few very select pill bugs, which is awesome because actually on Wednesday, we are going to do an experiment with pill bugs. And so maybe we could use the pill bugs from her happy home for that. So whatever you've done as your plan is amazing. All right, I want you to know that. Please know you might have to deviate from your plan. A lot of times when we build something, we might find out this is not building quite the way I thought and we have to modify or revise. That's okay. All right, there is no shame in having to say, that didn't work, let me try something else. That's actually a really good thing because that means we're learning as we go. All right, so being wrong is not bad. Being wrong is actually great because it helps us learn. So now we're just gonna build it. Unless we have a question, I think we have a question. No, I just gotta say hi, Kaya. Ooh, hi, Kaya! Also, Yay. it looks like we've had some people with different experiences with bugs. Ooh. Some people don't like them, some people love them. It's important to respect everybody's yeah. experience. Yes, that and is so true. And if you so have something true. you can teach about, mm -hmm. you know, do it in as kind of way as possible. Agreed. Yeah, we should make sure that we are thoughtful to everybody. Some people, this might be a really hard week because we're doing bugs. And some people really, some I don't like it when bugs creepy crawl on me. That creeps me out. So these guys are my milk cartons so while isabella works on engineering her awesome bug hotel i'm going to work on engineering the bug hotel if you want to do like more of a natural experience experiment so i'm going to cut this guy up i remember i want to keep this part as the roof so i think i'm actually to get into the cutting i'm going to cut sort of down like this and i'll cut my little hole right here and I think I'm going to use some tape so that I can tape this back up. Because look, now I have this beautiful roof that will protect them from the rain. And I could then have like some little water pieces. And maybe I'll put some dirt down here. I don't quite know Ooh, if I'll do that. But that's an option. Maybe I'll just fill one with dirt and see, which would be really, really cool too. All right, so I'm just going to tape this guy up right here. And I'm going to do the same thing for each of my projects. I'm going to make the same sort of cuts, and I'm going to also then fill it in with things. So things that I thought bugs might like, and you might think it's different things, and that's totally fine because you could fill yours with different things, all right? I thought bugs might really like some dead leaves. So I might just take dead leaves and stuff them in here. And I'm just going to put one item per milk carton because I want to know which one do they like the best. So I'm just going to stuff in some dead leaves. And here is one really quick little guy stuffed with dead leaves. And I can see, do I see more critters crawling out of the dead leaves than I do out of whatever I make next, which I think will be twigs. So again, I'm just going to cut down and I'm going to cut out a little square. I cut out this sort of triangle of the milk cartons. And if you're getting your school lunches, I know our school has a free lunch program for everybody 2 to 18. So if you're doing that, you might have a lot of excess milk cartons like we do. And, and if you have school lunches that are available to anybody, you should check it out because it helps keep people in a job, which is always a benefit. So now I have this next one. Again, I've got this beautiful little roof on it. And then I've just got this hole that I can do. And maybe I'll plug in a bunch of twigs. I have these really cool things called, oh, it's an easy cutter. We're going to see how easily it cuts. Mm. I'm just going to measure about how far I think it'll need to go. Let's see. Can we do it? Ugh. Yes, I think we can do it because then we can break it from here. Ooh, I think. Yes, yes. Let's try breaking it now. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm just going to plug that guy in. Ooh, it was maybe a little too long. That's okay. Notice, problem comes up, not a big deal. It's all right. 
I'll just try to cut shorter next time. And I'll cut this guy. And we're just going to go through and we're going to cut these. I'm going to give them to Evan. He's going to cut me quite a few. And then I'm going to also cut some different sized ones so that I have like sort of these thick little ones. And then I'll have some thin ones I can shove in there. And maybe I find out that ants like this better because there's carpenter ants that like wood. Maybe termites like these because termites break down the wood. There's lots of beetles that eat wood, so maybe they like them. We're going to find out. And I'm just going to, I don't even need glue or anything for this. And part of the reason why for these ones I don't want to use things like glue is that I don't know, I don't think the insects would want to eat glue. Here we're making them a nice habitat. So I need to get it, keep it together and keep it happy. But here I'm sort of doing more of an observational experiment and I don't want to introduce things like pesticides or things that will harm them in it. But you can see this, wow, he's doing a really good job. They're like all the same length. I think I'm gonna give this long one back to him <laughs> because look how cool that looks. They're all the same length. That is neat. It's gonna look like a great little like wood birdhouse. Georgia is starting to make one. I see she's got like a cool, pathway to hers. Are you going to use this as a roof still? Are you keeping this as a roof? Yeah. Just keeping parts as a roof? She's sort of making cuts and then she's going to modify it if she needs tape. Here's some tape to modify it, which is kind of a cool thing. Like what could you do with just one milk carton? Although if I know my Georgia, she's really creative. She likes to really build. So it's unlikely it's just one milk carton. I would be surprised by that. All right. So we've got a bunch of these and like a wood pile. It is like a little wood pile. It's like we're ready for winter. And I'm going to cut some of these little smaller ones. I don't know how he measured them all so perfectly the same size. Oh, look, I'm strong enough for this. That's just because Evan's really strong though. And for some of this, you might need parents to help you. And that's okay. There is no shame in needing help to do things. Whether that parent that help comes from a parent or that help comes from a sibling, that's all totally fine. Also, I get this a lot in some of my classes, and it might be happening in some houses right now, of like, that was my idea, don't do my idea. And I just want to say, copying is like a really great form of saying, that's a really good idea, I like what you're doing, I want to see if that works too. And then maybe there's different modifications. So it's not something to really fight about. It's something to be proud of. Like, I need something that somebody else thought was a really good idea. So don't be upset about that. It's always my stuff, my prognosis on that. A lot of All people right. do that. A lot of people get really upset about copying. And in science, copying is sort of like how we learn, right? So we don't necessarily copy and try to take credit for but I might see something that somebody else has done and said, oh, wow, that worked really well. I'm going to do it again in my lab and see if that helps me answer some of my questions. So it's not seen as a really terrible thing, as long as you give credit. As long as you're willing to say this wasn't my idea totally. Uh, we got a question. Yeah. Can we use hot glue or will the bugs try and eat it and get sick? Well, so if you use, here's a couple things. Hot glue is a tricky one because if you put your insect hotel outside, hot glue actually won't work very well. Um, you can certainly use it, and I don't think the bugs will necessarily eat it, but part of the reason why I'm not using anything in this is just to make sure I don't change their habitat because I'm going to use this as an experiment. I'm going to put this out all in the same area, and we're going to see like who inhabits what, do they like more of something. If you're doing something more like this, though, you're really just taking a few bugs and you're making them a playground, which is equally awesome. So I would think about what you're using it for. Well, I'm, I don't think I'm we want the bugs to eat. I'm making a hotel, but then a t this part goes to a playground. Ooh, George is making a hotel and a playground. That's She's like the Orlando Studios. It, it connects, though. And Isabella looks like she's gone outside and she's found an awesome wooden log. And drilled into it. That's amazing. Love it. Did you drill this out with Daddy's help? Sounds like she did. This is going to be my little water reservoir. So I've got just like a little thing for water. Because remember, insects love water. And I could even tape them like this. Maybe I'll tape them like that, though. So that there's like a little water spot. Ooh, but now I'm thinking, if this was my plan, 
how would the bugs get out without drowning if I put my water right there? So now I'm rethinking that. I don't know oh, if water right could, there is a good you idea. You could do like, oh, like, wait, you, you could do water. Oh, I could do like a do pathway. Walls. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to do, I'm not sure if this is what Georgia was thinking, but what she said gave me an idea. I, I just want to say and, um, that if you make a pathway, uh, like, like um, a wall right here, mm -hmm. then it won't, they won't drown because yeah. they'll just drink from it. So I'm thinking that I'm taking George's idea. I'm thinking I might just make like a little dock area. But you know what? I'm thinking actually maybe a better idea is to put they might, my they might like my oh. water somewhere else. I'll put my water over here. I want to if I'm designing an experiment, I want to actually put my water at the same distance from both. So I think I might set this up outside, some water in this nice little house of leaves and the house of wood. I'm really liking the design of the house of wood. I won't lie. Um, and I can now take this outside, I can set it up in a shady spot, kind of by where our compost pile is, because our compost pile already has lots of bugs. They're in there and they're loving it because it's like a nice safe place and they're devouring all of those wood and dead leaves. And I can see who chooses to come into here. How many choose to come in here? Is there a lot or a little? Does everybody like the dead leaves and nobody likes the twigs? Does everybody like the twigs and nobody likes the dead leaves? Do all the centipedes like the dead leaves and all the pill bugs like the twigs? Or is that reversed? I can now, I have an experiment that I've designed and built to test that, which is really cool. And if you're making a bug hotel slash theme park extravaganza, you can build to your heart's content and then you can watch your little bugs and see what they do and do not like. And you know, maybe Isabella's thinking they love this log, but maybe when she gets her roly polies in there, they never go into this really cool raw log room, which looks kind of like a big rock climbing room, to be honest. Oh, oh, there's a, That's there's pretty a, cool. There's already a spider in it. There's already a spider in it. Yes. Yeah, but look at that hole that. I there. know there is a spider. I built Teeny some tiny holes spider. Um, where there wasn't and already. So. Happy hole. So we already have some residents in Isabella's. And I know that. Bug um, hotel. Um, I found this piece of log over there, and some beetles were already living in it. Ooh, so. so we might have some beetles, which no, is um, cool. so I, Oh, they uh, left. They, yeah, they left. They fled because they I was like, um, and but they were like living under it, and there, that's how there was a bunch of holes already before I built yes. them. Yes. So you can see the beetles are doing their work, breaking down that log, which is really important. We don't want a tree to fall and just to sit there forever. We need these insects to start breaking down things that are dead whether that's a dead animal or a dead tree, right? We need to break it down so that we can reuse it. Otherwise, we'd be like living on a whole bunch of logs. It would be, I don't know, it'd be a very interesting world without bugs breaking things down for us because we really would be like, our, the forest, when a tree falls, would be there forever. So like when trees fell like um, 10,000 years ago, they'd still be in our forest because there would be nothing to decompose it. There'd be no nutrients for new things. And there'd be no nutrients for new things. So we'd, it'd probably be a pretty boring earth without those bugs. And I don't know. I am really excited about both of these projects. And I'm super excited to see in Zoom which projects you guys chose and what you're choosing to make for your project. Like, will you have this cool rock climbing, wood eating wall? Will you have a bug hotel created next to an amusement park, which is super cool? I don't know. I'm really interested to see what sort of problems and solutions you guys have found in this fun little making it challenge that we have today. Um, and tomorrow we will be making a book into a beehive, which is fun. You don't have to have this specific book. You just need any book and like a can or a jar or a book with a book cover that you don't want anymore would be work fine. Um, and we're going to help our mason bees, which are amazing pollinators that are also solitary bees. They don't sting. So that is really handy. And if you happen to have this book, they have a lot of really cool information about bees in it. So that's going to be tomorrow. And then we have some cool projects of watching science in action and making, creating hypotheses and taking some data on Wednesday. Friday, we are making circuit bugs, which will be fun. And I forget what we're doing on Thursday. Hmm. Thursday was the water walkers. Oh, Thursday we're making water. How could I forget about that? Thursday we're going to learn about surface tension and about how some bugs can actually walk on water. Super excited about that. 
All right, we are going to head over into Zoom to see all of your projects. If you don't have access to our Zoom yet, you can get access, it's super easy. You go to patreon.com slash Research. You can support us for as little as $1 a week and you get all of this science programming that you can come when you wanna come, not come when you don't wanna come, no big deal. You can learn all sorts of cool things. You have all sorts of building and it's a constant in your schedule. So it's really easy to make structure in your day. That'll be really, really fun. Is there any questions before we head off of YouTube and into Zoom? We questions. Mm. Um, Maybe not. We will no definitely put a video on Tiny Dancer and friends who are all growing legs over in Zoom. Our beetles are not so exciting yet, so we don't have anything of the mealworms. And we're not showing our caterpillars right now because they are all in their chrysalises and they are very precariously hanging obviously from that little piece of cloth. So we're gonna let them have a little bit of solitude and no paparazzi on them during that time. So we will head over to Zoom. I wanna say thank you so much for joining us as we learn about the importance of bugs and design awesome bug hotels to help these species thrive or just as a way for us to bring them more into our lives and learn about them and watch them and see what they do, which is a really important thing too. So I am curious to see who has chosen to do what we will see you over in Zoom. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be live every day at 11.30 Pacific all the way until summertime, till school gets out. So we will see you there and have a good afternoon. Bye, friends. I'm excited to set this one up. I can't wait for my YouTube.